Sure, in the next five years, um, I think it's important uh, for Canadians and the church to recognize that the journey of reconciliation um, is, is one that's a constant uh, commitment. Um, I think Canadians, uh, and this is true of the church too, have uh, kind of a, uh, an inclination to think that the TRC gave us an opportunity to, to learn some things, um, to be empathetic, um, and maybe now it's time to move on. Well, uh, Justice Sinclair, who was the lead commissioner of, of the, the TRC, basically said, uh, look, uh, the, the journey of reconciliation is, is one that demands uh, consistency. It's a generational project. Uh, the past is not in the past for many Indigenous communities. Um, they live with the legacy of intergenerational trauma and the resulting social dislocations. Um, and that, uh, that reality of, of injustice and inequity uh, is persistent, which means uh, that the journey of reconciliation and healing uh, is, is, is one that's continual. It's also important to recognize that this is not uh, simply uh, an indigenous problem. I, I wish I, um... I could have the quote memorized, but there is a quote from, from Chief Ney Perse from like over 140 years ago. And the words that he uses, um, he so eloquently says are, are the same words, but in the same English language, but um, about the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And it's still so applicable today. Um, the, the request, you know, to be a free man, to make your own decisions and, and have that self-determination to do um, what, what um, other people get to do, other Canadians get to do without restraints. The, the point of everything I'm trying to say here is that reconciliation is a long journey. Uh, it's not uh, simply the, the, the affirmation of, of, uh, of Call to Action 48. Uh, we can't mark our journey as done because we did that in March 2016. We can't mark our journey as done because um, Shannon and uh, Kimsey have, have done wonderful work on TRC Calls to Action 59 and 60. The reality is we have a legacy of broken relationships. We have a legacy of injustice that persists. And that's something that doesn't go away overnight. Um, Again, Justice Sinclair, uh, when the, uh, the, the TRC final reports were released, uh, said something beautiful and important, which was, was poetic. Uh, and it, it went like this. This is, this is more or less a quote. We have described for you a mountain. We have shown you the path to the top and we call you to do the climbing. Um, that call I think is very much uh, for, for settler communities in Canada and particularly communities of faith who believe that Jesus calls us to a ministry of reconciliation. So that climb is a persistent one in which we walk together with Indigenous communities uh, and, and Indigenous friends uh, to seek justice and reconciliation in an ongoing way. So it's not at all that checkbox. It's, it's a persistent journey. And I think uh, we as a church can, can do that indeed for the next five years. And I'd say uh, at least for the next uh, two generations at the very least. It's really about turning in a new direction towards justice and, and r r right relationships uh, between communities. And that's challenging work and it's persistent work and it's spiritual work. And I think uh, we as a community can commit to that uh, pretty deeply. Uh, indeed, as we look into uh, further conversations on things like cross, uh, intercultural uh, ministry and the, uh, the now budding uh, hearts exchanged process um, about how we do ministry together uh, is, is a really critical part of that conversation of, of turning in a new direction together.